The International Association for Near-Death Studies presents NDE Radio, a weekly exploration of near-death experiences and similar encounters with the other side. Now, here's your host, Lee Whitting. Welcome once again to NDE Radio. I'm your perennial host, Lee Whitting. In the U.S. alone, nearly a thousand people a day have a near-death experience. Yet despite how common NDEs have become, prejudice against the reality of NDEs and OBEs is still strong among the general public, among scientists, and the medical profession most importantly. It's been the goal of this show from its beginning to demonstrate the NDE experience is not only common, but an immensely important tool for communication to this world from the other side. But how to spread the word most effectively remains the question. To help answer that, a few weeks ago I told you about a novel I've written based on NDEs titled Beneath the Phoenix Door. And since then I've had some listeners email to ask what it's about. As I said, it's based on NDE reports and tackles questions about the possibility of rediscovering the Garden of Eden, a place many NDEers have visited and describe as realer than real. The book probes other puzzles, of course, including questions about duality, questions about good versus evil, quantum versus spirituality, these questions which confront us in this world and possibly in the next. The story involves oligarchs seeking refuge from the environmental destruction they've caused. In desperation, they finance two seminary teachers to go on a search for the extra-dimensional Garden of Eden. And there, with the help of Israel's scapegoat, they find the trees of knowledge and the tree of life in an inseparable embrace that uh, mirrors the world. I've dubbed the book uh, Adventure Theology, yet another approach to bring home the reality of NDEs. So, Beneath the Phoenix Door, uh, check it out and, and let me know what you think. Our guest today, Anthony Shen, is following the same calling to present the reality of NDEs in a convincing and artistic way. And Anthony is a remarkable French filmmaker with a number of beautifully made NDE-related documentaries available on YouTube. Anthony grew up in France and graduated from business school with a master's degree in economics and corporate finance. But after a nine-month bank uh, internship he didn't like at all, he decided to pursue studies in audiovisual and vis video production. And after graduating in media journalism and audiovisual production, he first worked as a video reporter with companies, media agencies, and TV channels. Now a freelancer, director, and video reporter for various clients, Anthony has also developed his own projects, which include documentaries, video clips, and fiction. He is based in France, but visits the U.S. on a regular basis to work on upcoming productions, and many of his documentaries, including those about NDEs, are available for free on YouTube. Anthony, welcome to NDE Radio. Yes, yeah, thank you. Hi. <laughs> Hi. It's a, a miracle of electronics that we can talk all the way from Maine to, to uh, France. Uh, you're in Avignon? Uh, yes, yes, in the south of France, yes. Yes, beautiful, a beautiful area. Sorry for my English. Don't apologize. It's so much better than so many Americans' English, uh, I'll tell you. Anyway, Anthony, were you raised in a Catholic family? Uh, yes, we can. Yes, you could say that, yes. I did my... Uh... I uh, confirmation at around 12 years old. Mm -hmm. I did go to the mass every other Sunday with my grandparents. Things like that. Things like that. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I had a, a similar upbringing here in, in the United States. But by the time you were going to business school, what were you thinking about God and religion? Um, I almost completely forgot about it i didn't go to the to the mass anymore i wasn't much into it but when i remember that when i was a child i, I had a lot of uh, ideas about who we are about the divine about things like that so mm. but i kind of forgot about it when i grew up and i decided to uh, with the advice of my parents to to make money in the banking system so I tried to do that <laughs> and I got so bored like it wasn't for me at all. Yes. So I decided to take the hard way and to 
make videos for free on YouTube. <laughs> that was a better idea. <laughs> not not a, probably not financially uh, rewarding so much as uh, art- artistically <laughs> rewarding. Let me ask you, when you were in business school, were your classmates worried about earth changes, about the environment and so forth, or did they, were they just into making money? No, it was just about making money. It was in uh, between 2005 and 2009. Ah. So it was before the great financial crisis. So it was even worse, you know, at that time. It was like the Wall Street was everything, you know. It was the geniuses of the finance. and Yes. Uh, so it was all about money. We even, I even had a teacher who always said... Uh, the first rule is uh, make profits. That's all. Yeah, the, the, the greed is good school of thinking. But this is very worrisome because it's that generation, if any, that's going to have to save the world from this environmental ruin that we've inflicted on it. Yes, it's, and, and for me, it was a, a failure for me, you know, because I, I, I had nothing against making profit or making a, a lot of money. I was like a, almost all the the young people at my time. But the thing is, I wasn't able to to, to keep a job in this kind of uh, mm. area, you know. How did you happen to learn about NDEs? Uh, I was uh, o- much older than that. I was already 27 years old, something like that. Mm-hmm. And I heard about, the first was a near-death experience about an American woman, Palm Reynolds, I don't know if the pronunciation is correct, but it was a, a very strong uh, case of a near-death experience. And I, it was, uh, I don't know how to say in English, like it was very, a big surprise for me mm. to, to hear about this kind of experience. And peop- I, I, told, I talked about, uh, about that with my family and my friends, and they were all saying uh, it's just a trick of the mind, just an hallucination, just uh, uh, dumb people, I don't know, things like that. But something, uh, I knew it wasn't just a trick of the mind because those people were often able to... to, to explain what was going on in, in other rooms, in the hospital, things like that. So, mm. you know, uh, I wanted to know more about that. And then I, I learned about everything else. Yes, what they call veridical evidence, evidence that can't be disputed. If, if someone's lying dead on the operating table, how can they explain what their grandmother is saying down in the waiting room, you know, uh, several rooms away? Um, yeah, and as you were saying in the beginning of the show, there are so many of them, uh, so many near-death experiences all across the world, all across uh, history. Mm-hmm. Did it remind you any of the thoughts and questions that you'd had when you were a child and you were interested in spirituality? Yes, but I, I'm kind of a I'm a slow person. I, it takes me time to understand things about myself. So I, it took me like uh, five years to, to realize that that was the kind of uh, ideas I had when I was a child. Like uh, I was always explaining people when I was a child like, that God was not a person. It was every person was God if we were able to activate something within us. And I had the image of a, a purple thing in the chest when I was a child. So that kind of ideas I had. When you say a purple thing in the chest, you mean the uh, heart connection? Yes, I I just I saw. Uh, I don't know. That's what that, that's what I remember now. Uh, like a, a jewel or something like that, you know. Oh, that's very interesting. Well, anyway, I, and I had a lot of ideas like that. So maybe on an unconscious level, I was looking for this kind of experiences while I was in business school. Yes. <laughs> but I I wanted to forget maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you probably wouldn't find it in an accounting class, for example. So Anthony, you've no, never no. You, you've never had an NDE or OBE, but you got so interested in the subject that it moved you from from banking, from finance and all of that world to NDE filmmaking. That's a, it's quite a jump. It's certainly a huge financial jump. And uh, in another interview, I think you, you said it was deep intuition yes. that got you into it. I thought maybe you could explain deep intuition to us. 
Uh, well, it's it's like it's as if I I know, but I don't know how I know it. You know, it's I know that this three D world is not everything there is. I just know it. I know there is something beyond what we can grasp with the with our five senses. But I don't have any, or at least at the beginning, I didn't have uh, any proof about it. Mm. It was just a strong feeling. And that, that was uh, that strong feeling that guided me through these uh, videos at first. Yes. And I wanted to meet people. That's what, that I, I always loved to make interviews because I wanted to meet these people and to ask them questions. It wasn't even about making a YouTube channel. It was... A, at first, it was for me. I wanted to know more about the, that. I, I, I was very curious about these experiences. So this is an informal way of, of educating yourself about something that you've always been curious about. Yeah, of, yeah, of course. Of uh. course. I, I think it's, uh, in the end, it's about, maybe it's just about, uh, I want to know who I am, maybe just, you know. Of course. <laughs> Maybe I, I'm just looking for myself at some level. To, you know, mm. it's the same for every one of us, maybe. Do you think God directed you to this career? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what you mean by God. What is the idea behind God? But I think something greater, a greater intelligence has guided me through these subjects because I had so many problems at first, uh, money problems, every kind of problem you can imagine. And somewhat I always managed to go through. And it wasn't because of me. So something has guided me all along the way, I think. Huh. But I, I'm not, a, I, it's just a logical conclusion. But I don't, I'm not a psychic, so I don't really know for sure, you know. In the end, I don't know anything, so <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do believe you're learning. <laughs> yeah, I ask questions. <laughs> I started the program with a mention of my book's exploration of duality on different levels because I know you have a similar interest in, in the subject. And in another interview, you talked about the 3D, 4D, 5D, and, uh, and ultimate, ultimately perhaps more D connections with what what are the levels of reality. And I, I uh, hoped you could explain what's the 3D level of reality and the 4D level of reality and, and so on. Okay. <laughs> I'll do my best in English because it's, <laughs> it's not that easy to explain this kind of uh, things in English for me right now. But um, let's say 3D is the world we experience with our five senses. So it's the world around us, uh, the everyday world. But maybe there are other ways of explaining it. But let's say 4D can be the astral plane, the astral level. Like when you have a dream or when you're dead, like uh, psychic mediums can connect to, the, to this 4D world. But it's, there is, I think there is still duality in this 4D dimension. That's why you have nightmares at night. That's why uh, so many things. But I think when you go above the 4D level, there is no duality, good and bad anymore, as we experience it here. But that's my way of uh, explaining these realities. Mm. I don't know about what you think about that. So... If there's no duality, then you're saying we are all one. Yes, of, yes. On, the, on that 5D level. Yes. Ah, very good. What do you think about the Matrix movies idea that we are living in a, almost like a video game world on the 3D level? Um, I think there is a lot of things that are, a lot of ideas that are true behind these uh, movies. Uh, of course, it's a, it's a Hollywood uh, franchise. Hollywood films, so, but the main idea is that the, the, how can I say, the reality we experience every day is not as real as we think it is. At some level, it's just a projection mm. of the mind, mm. but we don't realize it because we kind of totally forgot who we were, so we are just like zombies here. It's like maybe like a dream here. Mm. It's not as real as we think. And when you go 
above the 3D, 4D, 5D, and, and so on, you, it's more real than that. You wake up to who you are. And that's, that's uh, what uh, a lot of people having a near-death experience are saying. Uh, it was more real than this physical reality. Yes. So, I forgot the question. But, uh, <laughs> well, we, the question? <laughs> we, we, we were talking about the, the Matrix. Uh, oh, the Matrix, sorry. Yeah. But then to move to the 4D world, which is still a, a place of duality, uh, I think you said uh, it's like good versus bad, but there's no solution. Yes. There's no resolution in the 4D world to that duality. Yes, that makes sense to me. Yeah. That on this uh, astral level, the 4D level, it's still uh, you experience at some level, at this level, sorry, you experience your own thoughts and your own feelings, like uh, when you have a nightmare, for instance. Yes. Yeah, you're not in this physical plane anymore, but it's still good versus bad and things like that. But at some higher level, this is not true anymore. There is just one source, one God. What do you think about the dimension of time on the, on the, say, the 5D level where we are all one? Does time disappear? I think time and space are relative to consciousness and not the other way around. We are projecting time and space in this reality. So outside of this reality, time and space don't have the same uh, meaning at all. It's not, it's not the same. Uh -huh. Time, uh, it's very, on a science level, it's very hard to define time. What is, we can define duration. I don't know if you understand me. We can un understand what is the duration, I like see. five minutes, ten minutes, but what is time? Because it's always now. So what is, you know, it's really hard to explain that in science. Yes, and in philosophy as well. <laughs> yes, and in philosophy. I always liked philosophy when I was a teenager, by the way. So, You begin your documentary, Who We Are, with a quote, uh, Know thyself, and you shall know the universe and, and the gods. Yeah. And what does that mean to you? We often think that it's like a, a very romantic uh, sentence, you know? Yes. It's a very nice thing to say. Uh, it's very... Lovely, like uh, if you know yourself, you will understand uh, your surrounding. But that's not what what this sentence is saying. I I think it's it's uh, it's uh, how can I say? It's very precise. It's if you know who you are, you will know the universe mm. and the gods. But you can say just you can, you will know the universe. So if you know yourself truly, you will truly n know the whole universe. So, you are the whole universe experiencing itself. That's very simple. <laughs> it's analogous to holograms. Yes, yes, yes. Where each little piece contains the whole yes, in a I, miniature version. I am very, very passionate about these kind of subjects we are talking right now. For me, it's the essence of what I want to talk about. Yes. It's the, the, it's the logical conclusion to everything. Oneness. I don't see any other logical conclusion than that. That's it. Maybe it's too simple. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's, it's simple, but it's profound. <laughs> e equals mc squared is a very simple formula for something that is vast and uh, over, overwhelmingly amazing. Yes, yes. But the simplicity of it is also, is also <laughs> equally uh, profound. In who we are. You have a lovely interview with Anita Morshani yes. in which she compares uh, us individuals to the fragments of light cast when one light shines on a mirror ball, you know, one of those spinning mirror balls that they have in, over here. They have them in high school prom dances. The one light is God, mm -hmm. yes. and we are the fragmented glimmers that, that uh, the mirror ball reflects. So... What do you suppose is God's motivation for creating this mirror ball existence that we're living? Oh, <laughs> very profound question. Just the God wanting, wanting to experience himself with a lot, uh, a lot of different experiences. The answer is always, I think it's something around love and love is everything that matters things like that, because I think it's beyond our 3D 
brain, you know. I, I cannot process these ideas with my brain right now. Like, it's too much. I don't know what, is, <laughs> what would be your answer about that. Like, it's, I know there is a deep meaning, but it's like... Uh, because people always ask me, like, uh, in the comments on YouTube, and then uh, what about uh, uh, murderers? What about uh, bad people on, in, on this planet? What about these people? What about, uh, you know... And then, what about them? You know, what's the meaning of that? I don't know. Well, I think in that case, your statement that it all comes back to love is probably very important and uh, intrinsic in, in how that light that gets fragmented reassembles itself when we all become one in, in your fifth dimension. Yes, we're here to enlighten the, this 3D level, I think. We're here to give and to spiritualize the the matter something like that yes yes another star in that documentary that you made is dean radin who says we create our own reality from habits because 95 percent of our thinking comes from our subconscious yes and most of that was programmed by our upbringing before the age of seven yes so can artists like uh people like you <laughs> such as filmmakers a break through that level of habit to enlighten folks about the reality of NDEs? Yeah, yeah, that's a really good question. I had a really hard time with that, and I still have a hard time with that. You know, the my family, my parents, my friends. Um, it's a really hard work on myself to 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 make these subjects for me because. Uh, I'm like everyone else. I have to go against my fears a lot of the time, and um, um, yeah, it's an it's an everyday job for me. Mm -hmm. It's uh, there is on one on one hand, it's very easy to ask questions about uh, great ideas like that, but on the other hand, on in my life, it's kind of uh, it's not very easy to integrate these ideas all the time. Yeah, yeah. Eben Alexander, who's also in, in your film, talks about the brain as the monkey mind yes. that continually chatters at us. Yes. <laughs> and he, I don't know if, he, if it's his phrase or someone else's, but he says it's just like having an annoying roommate. Yes. <laughs> Which I thought was very funny. <laughs> so with that monkey mind chatter going on, how do we accomplish that proverb that you opened with that to know thyself is so important. I think there are many ways to to do that. One way could be quiet your mind, like meditation practices, things like that. Sometimes it's just the, the suffering of your life, you know. When people, they suffer so much, like they, at the end, they just want to find a new answer, a new way, you know. It's just too much and you have to change. So, yes, yeah, there are so many ways to, to do that. And, and for me, it's funny because a lot of, <laughs> very often, I watch my own uh, parts of my videos like uh, five years after they were released. And I, myself, I learn things from my own videos because I forgot what was the message sometimes, you know. You know, I got caught in, uh, in my own fears and... Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do and I'm lost. And, and then I realized, oh, I talked about that in my own video. So uh. <laughs> it's kind of I'm, a, I'm two persons sometimes in my head. But look, look at what a gift you've given not only to, uh, to the world, but to yourself again to have captured uh, those thoughts and those explanations in your videos. That's really, that's really amazing. You know, I was really moved by your interview with John Butler, who said something like... Um, if you long for truth, mm -hmm. truth meaning love, then freedom takes you by the hand and leads you home. Yeah. Yes. And, and he also said, real knowledge comes from revelation. Yes. yes. So uh, tell our audience something more about John Butler. He's living in the north of England and he's, uh, he, has, he had been a farmer for all his life and he... He, had, he has experienced a lot of depressions in his life. And so he learned to, he has learned to quiet his mind. 
Um, and what he's saying about revelation is very important, I think. It's like at some point, what you were saying about the bonky mind, it's at some point it's useless to solve your problems sometimes. Mm. You just have to let go, show up in faith, and something greater than you will come and help you. That's what, that's what faith mm. is. And I'm the kind of person I always want to, to understand everything. But this, you, I think I cannot understand more about that. It's like uh, you have to let go and something will help you along the way. And that's the conclusion of the documentary, Who We Are. You will be taken care of. So it's all about faith, maybe. Maybe those great uh, people were right all along history. <laughs> Don't be fearful. Oh, yes. Well, fear, I mean, love and fear are the opposite ends of the spectrum. And the more you go toward fear, the, the less you're loving and vice versa. Yes. Yes. So yeah. they're too intimately connected. But they're also, it's part of the dualistic 3D mm -hmm. and, and 4D world that we're, that we're dealing with on a daily level. Let me, let me ask you, do you get a contact high from interviewing NDEers like Anita Morjani and Evan Alexander? Uh, what do you mean? A, con uh... a contact high is like when you're with somebody who's on drugs, but you're having the, the drug experience just by being with them. Oh, yes, yes. And I, especially when I'm doing the editing of the video, because it takes me like uh, one week to edit uh, an interview. So I spend a, a whole week with the person in front of my screen. So, And uh, I have moments where I, I experience the what he or she is saying. You know, I experience the, something very peaceful, something very powerful. I can really, I can feel it during the editing of the video. Mm. And that's what I try to, to put in the editing so that people can feel it too. I do my best. And you've done it really well. Oh. I mean, your videos are such a powerful message about NDEs that I encourage all of our listeners to go and watch these productions. They're amazing. Yeah, thank you. Most of the time, I wish I had more indications about uh, what I'm supposed to do, you know, <laughs> because it's like uh, <laughs> people ask me, why are you doing all this, why are you taking interest, why do you take interest in these subjects? And I, oh, that's a really good question, you know. <laughs> I just want to, I just feel it, that's it. So I wish I had more. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's why I do this uh, NDE radio show. Yes. You know, I, it's just, it's so inspiring to talk to people about these experiences and these revelations. The, they're like... Um, Russian icons, mm -hmm. the uh, Orthodox, hang on the walls. They're, they call them windows into heaven. And I think that each NDE is like another window into heaven. And we get a glimpse of the realer than real. Yes, and every person has their own way of explaining things. It's always the same kind of ideas. But like when I'm talking with you right now, you know, you have your way of uh, asking me questions and explaining things. And every time I understand something new, I realize something new, like right now, it's you, you just learn every time. At least for me, I learn every time. I think that's why we're here, is to keep on learning as long as we can. Anthony, I'm sorry to say we've run out of time for today. Oh, but I want to thank you so much for sharing your in filmmaking experiences, your your philosophical experiences, and just the deep intuition that we've been talking about. Tell the audience how they can learn more about you and find uh, your films. Oh, it's very simple. It's on so most of my videos are on YouTube. Just look for Anthony Chen, C H E N E, or AnthonyChen.com, and that's it. Okay. And uh, thank you for inviting me, by the way. I, I, I'm not very used to do interviews myself, about me, I mean. So. Well, I think, uh, <laughs> I think listeners are going to find this one especially interesting. This is such uh, an amazing topic, and any of the various ways that we can present it to the public, either through 
a show like mine or films like yours or books or, you know, whatever, especially people standing up and sharing their own personal NDEs, you know, just with the people in the room that they're talking to, this could change the world. It could really change the direction of the world as we became more conscious of of the higher reality. Yeah, I hope so too. And your questions were really accurate, well, really deep. So I know you know a lot about these topics. <laughs> well, not as much as I'd like to, for sure. If listeners would like to hear the show again, or any of our more than 400 archived NDE interviews, please go to Talk Zone's NDE radio site and hit the Past Shows button. And subscribe to our YouTube channel, NDE Radio with Lee Whitting, and listen for free to the complete NDE Radio Library. And don't uh, forget Beneath the Phoenix Door. And listen again next Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern at Talk Zone for more NDE Radio. I'm your host, Lee Whitting, saying... Thanks for listening. <laughs>